Good morning and welcome to another edition of Food for Thought. My name is Pastor Clint Lang with Hillside Community Church in 100 Mile House, BC, Canada. It is Tuesday, February the 2nd, 2021. And um, we're continuing on in our reflections in the book of James. Well, I, I was praying about what um, this next portion of scripture um, meant for all of us today here in this context. And um, I believe that I have heard from the Lord in regards to this. And um, yeah, I, I want to share with you what's on my heart. Uh, I don't know about you, but I, I've just noticed just an increase in grumpiness and tension everywhere I go. People are tired. They're tired of being locked down. They're tired of all the, it seems like, double standards everywhere. And like you don't really know what's a smoke screen and mirror from reality. And, and it's very frustrating. You get the sense sometimes like there's wealthy people pulling strings in different places in the world to manipulate things to the to make it beneficial for themselves so that they can profit from everyone else's suffering. Well, there's a lot of different ways to respond to this. And as believers, we can get sucked in to responding to these kind of frustrations and oppressions in the wrong way, in an ungodly way. James has a lot to say about this. He just finished talking to us about the rich oppressors who were profiteering off of the backs of the people working in the fields. And now James comes to speak to the Christians in verse 7 of James chapter 5. And I would encourage you, you know, read, if you didn't go through last the last food for thought, read the portion of scripture prior to this. It's always a good idea to put things in context. But James says this, starting with verse 7. Be patient then, brothers and sisters, until the Lord's coming. See how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop, patiently waiting for the autumn and spring rains. You too be patient and stand firm, because the Lord's coming is near. Don't grumble against one another, brothers and sisters, or you will be judged. The judge is standing at the door. So in yesterday's Food for Thought, James was speaking to these rich people who are oppressing the poverty-stricken believers in the early church. But now in verse 7, he turns his attention to the suffering believers to give them a word of encouragement. You see, the rich were comfortable enjoying the pleasures of this life, and according to the standards of the world, they were really doing well. But much of the good life they were living was as a result of what they were doing to the underclass. And James could see the suffering of the people and some of his brothers and sisters in the Lord were struggling along with this oppression and he wanted to encourage them. Waiting. James encourages the saints to be patient. Waiting is hard. When you're suffering through difficult things, especially when you're being, you, you feel like you're being unjustifiably oppressed by the rich and powerful. When you feel that way and you're downcast, it's easy to lash out and get grumpy about everything that seems unfair and unjust. 
it's easy for us to throw adult temper tantrums. And it would be nice sometimes if we could just do something to make these things just go away. And if we can't do anything to make them go away, the tendency is to do an awful lot of complaining. But it's good for us to remind one another that the earth and everything in it will pass away. Jesus is coming soon and I know that um, you know when James was writing this soon is still happening right now. You know over 2,000 years um, he says Jesus is coming soon. Was James out of touch? Well you see God is not slow in keeping his promises as some understand slowness to be. You see, 2,000 years to the Lord is like a snap of the fingers. It's a blink in eternity, if that. So, there's another passage of Scripture that talks about this in Second Peter chapter 3, verses 8 and 9. It says, Beloved, do not let this one thing escape your notice. With the Lord a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. But he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. My friends, I, I fear that, and um, I'll be frank, that some of us are being tempted to get sidetracked. Where we end up spending our energies licking our wounds because we're in sun, we're encountering suffering from injustices or perceived injustices that appear to be stacking up against us on all sides. And when we look at our problems and when we focus on them, getting sidetracked means that we lose focus on what is important to the heart of God during this time. God desperately calls us to keep our eyes focused on him. Just like Peter, when the waves were around him and Jesus was standing there on the water. The Lord wants us to keep our eyes on him and not on the wind and the waves around us being distracted. You see, God's mission is so important. His patience in stalling his coming, I guess, or delaying his coming, is a better word, is because of his great love for people. He's patient with the lost, not wanting anyone to perish, but all to come to repentance. He wishes for more people to come to salvation. And as his church, we are his hands. We're his mouthpiece. We can't forget this. It's not all about the trouble that we're encountering in our suffering. There's a mission out there. There's people that are lost. And the Lord is delaying His coming because He wants us to participate with Him in speaking and, uh, and helping others come to a place where they see their need for Christ. We're ambassadors to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. There is nothing in our circumstances and our oppression and suffering that the Lord is not fully aware of. Like the rich oppressors in James' day, the same sort of thing is happening today. This is not surprising. Human nature does not change. What are we going to do about it? Get angry? Fight? Or complain? Or do we do our fighting on our faces before God in prayer. Oh, my friends, I fear many of us have forgotten how to pray. We need to get back to prayer. As a matter of fact, as your pastor, I, I implore you as a congregation to stop looking so intently on all the trouble outwardly and to start looking upward. Look at Jesus. 
call out on the Lord. Intercessory prayer is so important. Jesus is coming soon. And he wants us to to be in step with him. To meet our culture where they need to be met. Our time is very short here. You know, at most, most, most of us, at most, have only a few years left on this, in this physical body. Today could actually be our final day. When you're tired and, and you're feeling oppressed, or you're suffering from something in your physical body or your physical life, the natural human reaction is to lash out somewhere. Someone needs to take the blame for what's happening. So people start pointing fingers at each other in anger. But James tells the saints in his letter not to grumble against each other. He warns that they must not turn on the other at the time of their frustration. Or, what does it say? It says the Lord will judge them and discipline them appropriately. He is the judge and he's standing at the door. Well, how does God judge his believers when they start turning inward and attacking one another and grumbling and complaining? Well, the Lord gives us discipline. And isn't it much better to learn from heeding good advice than to learn the hard way through discipline and the pain of that? God loves us and he's not going to let us get away with bad attitudes. Our bad attitudes are going to be judged by the Lord. And he's going to allow the circumstances in our lives to confront those bad attitudes to give us a chance to change. James encourages the believers to pay attention to the examples that were given in the Old Testament through the prophets and through Job who remained faithful to God through the greatest suffering that can be dealt by anyone. I mean, our problems comparatively to those guys are very small. He continues saying in verses 10 and 11, Brothers, as an example of patience and affliction, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. See how blessed we consider those who have persevered. You have heard of Job's perseverance and have seen the outcome from the Lord. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. My friends, the times are difficult. The times are tough. We don't have what we would like to see happening. We so feel we feel so out of control with the tides that are turning. But God is not out of control. It's now is the time to pray, to seek the face of the Lord, to endure affliction as good soldiers of Jesus Christ, and to shine like stars in the universe in the darkness of this world. Let your attitude, let your light shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. This is Food for Thought.